Hi there, I'm Isan Ali A. A. Shaw, and you're watching me on YouTube and Facebook Live. Soul as mind, or mind as soul, is our topic for discussion today. It's actually the continuation of the topic that we had discussed last week. Let me recall what we have discussed last week. We had a very detailed discussion on how human memory works and the storage of uh, the storage of our memories, where does it store? How human memory works? It works in three stages. First, encoding, second, storage, and third, recalling. Encoding is the first stage where we learn different things. We, the human, we learn different things through sensory experiences, through sensory observations, like audio, visual, touch, is that's how we come to know different things we observe and uh, learn different things and once we have learned and experienced that data must be stored somewhere that's where the second stage comes in and storage could be short term or long term it depends upon the utility and uh, usability of the information and third is recalling. When we are going to analyze something or predict something about the future, then we need the information. We, then we access the storage uh, where we have uh, stored our experiences. And that's how human memory works. And the question was, is our memory stored in the brain or in the mind? Or uh, does it store somewhere else? And uh, through various examples, we came to the conclusion that uh, human memory, the multiple copies of human memories are stored in various places. And uh, uh, mind as soul is soul. Also one of the uh, place where a copy of our memory stored. And that's our topic for discussion today. And to discuss this topic, my guest is none other than Edward Konovix, and he has joined us from Virginia, United States. Yeah, hey, hi, Ed. everybody. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I, you know. I, I hope it's I'm not too late there. No, it's 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 just dri drizzling. It's not really very wet, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's wet enough. I couldn't go bicycling, which I like mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So, mind and soul. When I asked you to send me the links, you said uh, there are no relevant links to this topic, and I said, okay, send me some irrelevant links. Yeah, you're picking up on my sense of humor. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, the, the problem with, with real knowledge mm -hmm. is it may be hidden. Mm -hmm. Real, The most important things that you need to know may mm -hmm. only be taught in secret societies. Mm -hmm. They're hidden. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm going to say is the mind is the soul, and the mm -hmm. mind collects memories, organizes mm -hmm. memories. Mm -hmm. See, to, to have a memory, we have to organize it. We can use mnemonics. Mm -hmm. We can use cross-referencing. Mm -hmm. But usually we remember something because we have two or three vectors or pointers to that memory. Mm -hmm. And let's say we have a soul and the soul is our mind. This is what's confusing. If our soul is our mind and our mind's memory and most of our memory stored in our body what mm -hmm. happens when we die well our memories are gone well could be our bones are generally not gone but what about people cremated but mm -hmm. we may store memory in the places we've been in the environment mm -hmm. so it may take the soul or the mind three days to wake up in the west we call a funeral awake Mm -hmm. After about three days after the person's dead. And as a kid, I noticed this. I, you know, mm -hmm. a relative would die. Mm -hmm. 
three days later would be the funeral or the wake, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then it would be raining. Almost Come all on. my relatives on their funeral would have mm -hmm. rain. I mm -hmm. said, well, this is strange. This is a little unusual. So we I, I sort of feel, I we sort of get feel we're, here. Mm -hmm. I sort we of feel we're, rain. we don't get rains here after the funeral, after three days of funeral. Well, there may be a reason for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is, we're water beings, mm -hmm. and if our memory is oriented, when mm -hmm. we die, we begin mm -hmm. to regroup our memory. Mm -hmm. And if, if your reference to reality mm -hmm. is what you're taught in culture, it may be mm -hmm. very difficult to regroup. Mm -hmm. So basically, when people are taught religion or belief in science, mm -hmm. they're not taught real knowledge. So when they die, it's very difficult for them to regroup their memory because mm -hmm. their memory is based on human culture. Mm -hmm. It's not based upon true knowledge. And what's true mm -hmm. knowledge is correct perception. If I can perceive your actions and the justice, of your mm -hmm. actions, which is if you do me a favor, and mm -hmm. I know I need to do you a favor back, yes. I'm directly perceiving justice. But if I'm making up some story or listening to a story someone else told, mm -hmm. I may be ignoring justice. Mm -hmm. So um, we're taught that the universe is unfair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seems unfair, but it mm -hmm. may not be. It may be more mm -hmm. concerned with the integration of your intelligence, which is the more intelligent you are, the better you organize your memory. And I noticed this as a kid. Mm -hmm. A lot of my favorite authors and scientists, mm -hmm. they lived to be 90 or 100 years old when most people back then died around 65. Mm -hmm. but, but these famous authors and scientists lived to be about... 80 or more years of age. Sophocles, mm -hmm. supposed to live to be 90. And I said, well, these are really intelligent people. They, some of them eat different types of diets, some of them exercise, some of them don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what's, what's the common um, thing among these people living older? Mm -hmm. They have their it's own way of thinking. Mm -hmm. they, they don't really listen when someone mm -hmm. else tries to tell them how to think. They mm -hmm. have their own interpretation and they defend it. So I, I think our soul is connected, connected to our mind. And why mm -hmm. we forget is the memories become irrelevant. When we're alive, what we remember about our family, our friends, our job, our studies are important. When we die, other things become important. So our memory like now, mm -hmm. our so memory changes. Die, mm -hmm. So when we die, uh, does it mean that our memories are alive or they die with it? Well, I think it's a mixed bag. I think some memories mm -hmm. collapse with the collapse of parts of the body and mm -hmm. other memories stay, particularly the culture. Mm -hmm. Just but like I think it depends on the person. I mean, some mm -hmm. people lose their memory before they die. Mm -hmm. I think. So I, uh, I think, in my view, perhaps I might be wrong. Uh, uh, in my observation, and I've discussed it with my other friends, that uh, the copies are, are the copies of the memories. They stay alive in the atmosphere because. Uh, let visit some places and you feel something different, uh, anywhere different, uh, uh, heritage site or uh, archaeological site, you feel something different. You feel, uh, you get a feeling that you have been here before. Sometimes you get, not most of the people get it, but some people do with the sensitive soul. They get the, they get the, a sense that, uh, 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 the feelings that you cannot describe in words. 
I think yeah, I, members... I think that's I think that's accurate. Mm -hmm. I was known as being sensitive or aware mm -hmm. of other people's feelings to some mm -hmm. extent. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine took me over to an archaeological dig, mm -hmm. the Cahokia mm -hmm. Mounds in mm -hmm. Illinois. Mm -hmm. That was an old Indian city of about American Indians, American mm -hmm. native city of about 50,000 people. And mm -hmm. there was this big mound, not a pyramid, this big mm -hmm. hill that was built. And inside mm -hmm. of it was a museum. And before mm -hmm. I went in the museum, my mm -hmm. friend asked me, what do I feel? Mm -hmm. And I said, I feel the agony of young women being mm -hmm. killed. Mm -hmm. And we go inside, and there's this display of young virgin women that were mm -hmm. sacrificed at the city. Mm -hmm. And I could feel them, and I didn't know it. I could just mm -hmm. feel the agony of mm -hmm. these young women being killed. Mm -hmm. And then I go inside the museum, and I see that was true. Mm -hmm. so, so I do. In some places, you feel. Happy in some places you feel sad and some fear, some places you feel fearful. I think uh, it, it is the memory copies of the memories that that are left in those places, and that's why we feel those things. It is something that we cannot prove, but uh, it is our sensory experiences and sensory observations. Yeah, I, when I was about. Mm -hmm. Um, 40, mm -hmm. 5, 50 years of age, I went back to the house mm -hmm. where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I could feel all the old memories. Mm -hmm. When, when I, I went, actually went into the house, I, mm -hmm. I could feel my childhood mm -hmm. much better than I could when I'm not in the place. So mm -hmm. we, we just say that subjective association but the real knowledge may be our memories are scattered over the places we lived. Mm -hmm. And as a ghost, <laughs> mm -hmm. we may be able to recollect, recollect mm -hmm. our memories that were left mm -hmm. behind. Mm -hmm. or we, and we're going to have new memories. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And I, uh, I think the first thing you learn as a ghost. Mm -hmm. is to watch. You, mm -hmm. you, you can't communicate, you can't move anything, mm -hmm. so you're watching. Mm -hmm. And watching may be an important facility, which mm -hmm. we may affect things how we perceive them. Mm -hmm. Then how we perceive them goes into the environment. Mm -hmm. So um, I think people it, think there's different... Mm -hmm. I think we have discussed it in our in our, in our previous episodes that uh, in, in the episodes of consciousness that our brain or our mind or our body act as a transmitter and also the exit the receiver uh, of the signals that we feel that some person is uh, sometimes the lovers it happens uh, with the uh, among the lovers that they feel it that uh, you're thinking about you call someone and the other person says oh well, i was just thinking about you and they have the mutual feelings of the same kind just like a mother uh, a mother and the infant baby and mother feels it that if something is going to is going to happen or is happening right now mother feels that that something is wrong so our this telepathy this uh, this connection that, that level of connectivity uh, is our, I think uh, our mind acts as a transmitter and receiver at, 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 uh, act as a transmitter and receiver all the time or sometime. But uh, if you apply this formula in here in the soul as mind, then our mind is also acting as a transmitter and receiver uh, because it is creating copies of memories in the atmosphere and also receiving it uh, when we visit those places. Yeah, I, I, I think what we mm -hmm. have then is how do we collect our memories mm -hmm. 
and put them together. Mm -hmm. And it's how we code them, which is our worldview. Mm -hmm. And um, the the worldview we have may mm -hmm. be too weak mm -hmm. to sustain our memories. They begin falling mm -hmm. apart. Mm -hmm. A lot of people today get Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because their worldview mm -hmm. is not strong enough to sustain the integrity of their memory. So the mm -hmm. failure of the memory is really the weakening of the soul or the mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I think what happens is the longer we live, the more memories we have. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have a good interpretation of what the world is about, we mm -hmm. age or get weak because we're trying to hold together these different memories. And they don't fit. I mean, mm -hmm. life is like a jigsaw puzzle where the pieces are supposed to fit for it mm -hmm. to work. But mm -hmm. if our overview, if how we view the nature of the universe mm -hmm. is incorrect, the more memory we have, the more difficult it is to fit. Mm -hmm. And and so the more accurate the memory, which is the more intelligent the person is, the longer they may live. So a dog mm -hmm. may only live 15 years. Mm -hmm. The dog doesn't have a strong enough intellect to really progress their memory. Mm -hmm. but, but we do. But it's still not strong enough. Mm -hmm. So whales live to be two or three hundred years old or longer because they may develop their own worldview that makes more sense that the memory can fit together better. And this mm -hmm. doesn't no one talks about this. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that even mentions this idea that mm -hmm. your soul is your mind and your mind mm -hmm. is what puts together your memories. Mm -hmm. And if your mind is weak and can't put together your memories in an intelligent way, you age and die, which is dying mm -hmm. is about regrouping your memories. Most people, when they were born, if they're reincarnated, they don't mm -hmm. remember their previous lives. And it may be because they have to start over again because how they put together their memory, how they see the nature of the universe, Mm -hmm. is wrong. So then reincarnation mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. You died because your memory failed. Not mm -hmm. that you didn't remember, but how you put your memories together failed. And so the universe now says, well, we got to start all over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't group your thinking well enough. Your memories don't fit well enough, so you're losing power. You can't mm -hmm. hold the body anymore because your mm -hmm. body is your body of knowledge or memory. So we got to start mm -hmm. all over again from scratch. <laughs> so reincarnation is true to some extent. If we well, put reincarnation it in this, may be may be necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, if because we put it person, in this theory, yeah, in my theory, reincarnation may be necessary mm -hmm. because. People have an inaccurate worldview. Mm -hmm. They didn't put together the world correctly. So their mm -hmm. memories are falling apart. It's taking too much of their energy to hold these memories together because they're just squeezing them together. They don't fit. Mm -hmm. So um, no one else says it. I, I, I think <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is true. The soul is the mind, and the mind assembles your memories. Mm -hmm. And a lot of ancient cultures say this. Then it makes sense why we die, because how we put together our memories have failed. Mm -hmm. And then those in power are going to give us worldviews or systems of beliefs that weaken us mm -hmm. by giving us a way, a wrongful way of putting together our lives. Mm -hmm. So biblical literature and other mm -hmm. literature say people once lived to be two, three hundred or four hundred years old. And mm -hmm. I think that's possible. Mm -hmm. 
but they they saw the world differently. They may have mm -hmm. seen it more accurately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Linda says mm -hmm. we've been watched from birth, and I think our ancestors mm -hmm. watch us. Mm -hmm. They imagine mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So we're tied with our DNA to our ancestors, and they watch us. And how they watch mm -hmm. us is like a football game. They cheer mm -hmm. and boo, and it mm -hmm. affects us. Mm -hmm. so, so, our, so we're influenced by our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Or are we our ancestors if we are in the cycle of life and birth, life, death, and birth? Again, the cycle is moving. Are we, uh, are, are we our ancestors? Yeah, we become ancestors. Mm -hmm. Well, it may, be, no, well um, it may be more than one thing we can become. I mean, some mm -hmm. people may become ancestors. Mm -hmm. Others may drift because they don't get along with their family. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, some people become everyone's ancestor. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the famous people, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, mm -hmm. they, Moses. They become mm -hmm. Abraham, an ancestor. For a lot mm -hmm. of people, mm -hmm. so I, I I think you have some what you call powerful ghosts mm -hmm. that influence people and mm -hmm. part of the human DNA. Mm -hmm. So how we look at the world somewhat determines our ancestors' support. I don't think mm -hmm. we can do much on our own. You know, people yeah. say God or Allah, but I think mm -hmm. I think we need ancestral ancestors angels, whatever genie, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. I mm -hmm. think we need support from those who don't have bodies that are supporting us. And I, I think a, a successful person is able to listen. They, they're mm -hmm. able to hear the case of the ancestors or the saints mm -hmm. or the Buddhas or the prophets around them they're able to perceive a higher level of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's in our culture. I think if you follow mm -hmm. what your culture says, you're going to not do that well. You have to think on your own. You have to be aware not only of how you think, mm -hmm. but how your ancestors or guardian angels think too. Mm -hmm. I and think I th you, have to be, you have to be sensitive enough to to perceive those experiences if you have the sensitive soul then only then you will be able to have those experiences and learn these things and perceive those memories of our ancestors that are left behind in the atmosphere yeah the i i think what the issue is mm -hmm is that we have to spend time listening, which is called prayer or meditation. But most people are taught prayer is a recording. You repeat something mm -hmm. or you ask for something. And I, I think the most successful praying is listening, mm -hmm. that you're listening for other points of view so that you, what you do in your life is supported, is, is mm -hmm. you know, agreeable to more beings. In fact, there, there was an expression in English, the silent majority, and this was like a hundred years ago, and the mm -hmm. silent majority was the dead. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese had this very strong, and so did the Romans. Both the mm -hmm. Chinese and the Romans had altars to their ancestors in their homes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying worship the ancestors. Mm -hmm. I'm saying um, they're around listen us. Them. Yes, listen to them. Listen to their case, and, and mm -hmm. you may have to correct them. <laughs> they yeah. may be wrong. So they got to yes, listen to you, good. too. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. So I think the most successful or happy people not only listen to their ancestors, their ancestors listen to them mm -hmm. so, so that yes. there's some harmony. Mm -hmm. I think it, it starts with the sensitivity. 
if you have the sensitive you have the sensitive soul only then it can happen and because uh most people don't get this they don't get the feeling uh just like you give you have given your uh, given your own experience that when you visit that place you felt the agony of the women who, who died and and there were other people were there perhaps they, they didn't have the same feeling they didn't get that feeling the reason you get it is because of the sensitivity i think uh, it doesn't happen with everyone well i think why it happens mm-hmm. is most people play recordings in their mind mm-hmm. they just keep talking they mm-hmm. don't can't listen in their mind mm-hmm. and since a little kid i could listen i could clear my mind Mm-hmm. and just listen mm-hmm. and not keep repeating what i'm told i didn't believe half the stuff i was told mm-hmm. and um so i i could actually listen so sensitivity mm-hmm. i think is you're just not repeating what people tell you mm-hmm. you can actually you can actually listen on your own because you're not playing a recording in your mind mm-hmm. you just be quiet and and feel it yeah i think feeling it is important mm-hmm. telepathy actually mm-hmm. means remote feeling mm-hmm. it doesn't mean guess the number in my mind mm-hmm. it's more guess what i'm feeling mm-hmm. i think we have discussed enough in our mind as soul and soul as mind and if you have uh, any other different experience you have to share just leave it in the comment box below uh, i would love to listen to you and and it would be uh, relevant to our theory to our collective theory that we have discussed at an i and it, yeah there are things that we cannot explain in words you just have to feel them you have to just sense it enough to to listen to your to that atmosphere or the memories that are left behind and that's it for today thank you thank you so much for watching us thank you linda for your comments and thank you ed for joining us for your okay. for sharing your for sharing your wonderful memories and see you next week with some of the topic okay bye everyone <laughs>